trash day. Waste Away Services had a good deal going. The company was heavily subsidized by the government, and their profit margin increased every year. I mean, they were big. And no wonder, trash had become even a bigger business than it had been earlier in the century. American packaging had become an even more redundant than earlier. Just about all the products that used paper were now double-wrapped in plastic. And with hardly any place to dump the refuse on the planet, the next logical step was space. And Waste Away Services got into it from the get-go. Their large spacecraft, loaded with refuse, took off about every two hours. Their new methane rockets, their own patented design, made sure that garbage, freeze-dried shit, desiccated dirty diapers, and much more of that which is not desired made its way to space. Even the government got into the picture. Hell, you couldn't even get within five miles of the space pad. Cops, electronic security devices, random searches of vendors, endless hassles. Waste Away had more security than when the president was taking a crap at a rest stop on the interstate. The infrastructure was phenomenal. The same old, dirty, waste collection trucks, complete with rude workers, made their way through the cities and suburbia without a glinch. They were even able to keep up the obnoxious early morning collection with the predictable bang, bang, bang. Noisy hydraulics still compacted the waste to the dismay of half-awake neighbors. On the exterior of the operation, all looked the same. However, that's where it ended. After the trucks had done their duty, the waste was taken to a processing center rather than a refuse dump. Huge machinery compacted the filth again and stuffed them into disposable plastic shipping crates. Giant forklifts placed the shipping crates, oh so gingerly, into an awaiting shuttle. An automatic PVC wrapping device put a big, I mean big, big bag over the stuff. There was no checking for hazardous waste like paint, spray cans, acid. Didn't matter. The stuff was on its way to the sun. They were in luck. Waste Away didn't even have to go through customs. With heavy lobbying and a few greased palms, the operation allowed transport without the usual red tape. After all, nobody's going to receive the stuff, and it probably ain't coming back. 87,000 tons. That's right, 87,000 tons of the stuff set at the receiving station between here and the moon. It's just sitting there and waiting till the tally's 100,000 tons. Carefully sorted, stacked with the built-in PVC hooks that attach to each module. By this time, it's easy to move because it don't weigh shit. It's a sight to behold. Wee little shuttles moving black and brown combined units the size of mountains with ease. The workers work at a station called STA, Space Trash Assembly. However, most of the workers there know it as Space Turd Assembly. The pay's pretty good, and there ain't no smell. Now you say there's no story in this? Hell, most of you know about the operation from cable. Waste Away sure spent enough in advertising to convince uh, people of their efficacy. Well, that's not the point. Read on. I know most of you remember July 18, 2031. The damage, death, and overall havoc were not the result of an aberrant asteroid. That was the usual media mushroom story. Keep the public in the dark and feed them shit. July 18th was a result of a long chain of events that involved the planet Earth, space, and, you guessed it, waste away. In early April of 2031, one of the large masses of trash ran into a problem on its coasting way to the sun. One module dislodged for some unknown reason from the rest. A small space rock stuck the dislodged module and released one single turd. This turd, in turn, crushed into the 100,000-ton cargo, less one module, and redirected its path away from the sun and toward the planet Earth. A rather freakish chain of circumstances ensued. How it was possible for the trash to be on a dead-on course with the spinning Earth will always be unanswered. How, well, how a single turd could wreak havoc on the planet was also another question. Those who saw the delayed video from the modules at the corporate headquarters of Wasteaway felt little worry about the off-course situation. After all, several had not made their mark before. If the trash would uh, wound up on Mercury or on the other side of the sun, who would complain? In reality, who would know besides Wasteaway? However, in early July, the tenor in the headquarters changed. An underling alerted his supervisor. The technician had seen a blue dot in front and on course with the aberrant trash on one of the space monitors. Waste Away decided to send a shuttle specifically to redirect the wayfaring garbage. But before they could send the next shuttle up, sunspot storms canceled all shuttles. 
By best estimates, the spots should last for about a week. They might be too late. Meetings, review of computer data, technical input went on day and night at Waste Away. However, the sunspot activity went on an additional three days. Turds were on their way. They got a hold of the military. It was an embarrassing thing. Waste Away could offer little speculation on what damage the Earth might encounter. After all, the Earth hadn't been shit on before, at least in such a big way. The military wanted to send up a nuclear missile to destroy the incoming debris. The staff meeting was leaked to Congress, and Congressman Hetty from Arkansas demanded a hearing on the matter. Therefore, the staff meetings and red tape went on too long, and a decision couldn't be made in time. Early morning, July 18th, the shit was going to hit the fan. The mammoth tubs of trash started their descent to the planet Earth. Unfortunate to all was the fact that the units had gained enough momentum to enter the atmosphere. The trash started burning due to the descent. However, it started to split up. The breakaway module slid, burned, glowed, disintegrated, and even some persevered. Some could even be seen as burning embers or flashing dots of light in the sky. Legions of geriatrics jammed the 911 lines with testimonies of the unknown. The good citizens volunteered speculation to the p police. UFOs, Jesus returning, asteroids, plane crash, etc. Tons of the stuff made it to the ground. There were explosions in New York City, on the desert in New Mexico, and even a shopping mall was destroyed in Ojai, California. A giant mass of the stuff fell in Lake Chagogagog, Manbogogagog, Chabungamungamog in Massachusetts. Several lakefront homes were destroyed. One man was killed in New York City when a blazing compacted diaper hit him in the chest. He was talking on his cell phone and not paying attention to the stuff falling from the sky. Some people claim that some of the fallen trice smelled like adobe. With the big war on terrorism still on, some were really pushing to bomb the hell out of Mexico. Several TV talking heads egged on the antagonists and protagonists, but the government dispelled fears quickly and moved on. Clean-up crews from the government carefully secreted all the debris away. It was a job that involved the National Guard, Army, Navy, Sheriff, and local police. Some scavenger in New Mexico was given 10 years in prison for holding on to a bullet-sized, burned-out soup can. Conspiracy terrorists went wild on the AM radio and shortwave. Preachers said that it was the end of the world. The president seemed to calm down most of the public with the cover story. He said that some asteroid particles had dislodged from Mars and Earth and caused the minor havoc. He added that such incidents only occur about every 10,000 years, and we wouldn't be around for the next one. Mylon Z was in a very popular made-for-TV movie about the event. Waste Away wasn't even mentioned. However, they had six 30-second spots during the movie. Congress secretly passed a law that Waste Away had to put disposable adjustment rockets on their shipments to the sun. It was back to the old model of government. New disaster, new law. Waste away complied. That was months ago, as you know. Everything has returned to normal. Shuttle takes off about every two hours. We're rid of most of the garbage that piles up on Earth, except for the animate kind again. Waste away is even more profitable than before the minor disaster. They raised the price of trash collection $25 a month. Scary.